Hi, my name is Ken Spector with LivingEco.com and I'm here with the principal architect for CEDG Design. His name's Carl Welty. Hi, Carl. Hi, Ken. Nice to meet you. You're here because you're an architect with a company that has built eco designs for the last 30 years. Yes. And can you tell me a little bit more about that? I'm a new partner, I should say, but our firm has been doing sustainable design since the 70s. Um, it grew out of an academic program at Cal Poly Pomona. It's now called the Center for Regenerative Studies, or the John Lyle Center for Regenerative Studies. Our firm was founded by one architect and one landscape architect who worked with John Lyle to develop it. So this is why we've been, the firm's been doing these really, really great green projects before green was green. Yes. And, it's, and the, the principles are, are the ideas behind this are what we call just really natural common sense how you build. Yes. And how people, how people, how cultures built before, not be, just before lead, but before the energy grid. So we look for lessons in history on how to build energy efficient buildings because there's because people were building these buildings before oil and before energy. So there's lots of lots of lessons to be learned from those people. You know, we had talked a little bit before about the community that you were building. What makes this community different from other communities? And what would you like to talk about in terms of how to make a community more sustainable? Well, this particular project is a 92-home subdivision in Claremont. Um, it's in the suburbs, but people are still building, building this way. Yes. And But this is a project that was finished in 1987. So if we do our math, that's 24 years yes. old. But it's a project that would be enviable by any lead standard. Um, but it's a project that the developer saved money. It, he probably saved four or five hundred thousand dollars in development costs because it was the way they designed, as you I hope you can see it, but the streets are 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 designed on the orient east and west, which is primary for maximizing potential solar gain. Okay. And I learned recently from documented that from the California Energy Commission, by just getting the orientation right, which is long buildings east to west, your energy is thirty to forty percent less. That's without doing any additional solar design features. Um, so east and west is extremely important. The other half of this project, the big idea is, is they designed it to work with a natural slope. So, they, so, that, so the streets, in addition to being east and west, they, it allowed them to drain all the stormwater into the middle park, which goes into what's called a dry creek bed, which looks a lot like a, a natural creek, okay. and it functions like a natural creek. So. So probably 80% of the water that hits this 40 acres gets recharged into the ground, which is now, as of last year, now mandated. Yes. But this, this, this solution does it in a beautiful, naturally integrated way. And it's in the middle of a park, kids play there. Um, the, all too often now, the, the way people are solving that problem, it gets put back into the, in the corner of a project in this kind of overly engineered, ugly system. Yes. But so the, the approach that our firm and a few people out here who've been thinking about this for 30 years, there's a way to do it that's more natural-like, yes. and natural-like is always cheaper, yes. which is why this project is very green, but not cost more, but cost less. Yes. And there's just, I mean, there's, there's just so few projects that are 24 years old, very green, and cost less, not more. So we're, that for us is really important because we have to be able to build affordable, sustainable. Yes. Yes. Can we talk a little bit about these? I was really yes. intrigued by these, what look like cinder blocks. Now, these look like they would be incredibly heavy, but they're not at all. I mean, I can actually lift one of these. Yeah, they're about 45 pounds. 45 pounds. They're designed so one person could lift them. Okay. And it's a, um, a, a building material that we finished a house in Santa Monica with. It's, um, it's a lead platinum home, but also a passive solar home. Okay. <clears throat> but the, the blocks are made out of 80% recycled styrofoam. Instead of going into the landfill, we make houses out of it. You know, this, like when we talk about the problem with styrofoam is that it's around forever. So one way I think about it is, so instead of putting it in landfills, we build a house out of it, and so your house is there forever without termite problems, without moisture problems. But it, so it's a really great material because your house is there forever with, with no maintenance. But it's also um, thermally for the, you know, it's, it's a really a great product because it's highly insulative. It's an R30, R40. Um, but also the, the structure of this system is we fill the core with concrete. 
And so that concrete becomes what we call a thermal mass, yes. which is a really important part of passive solar. So the house, if you um, get the right orientation with the south and you have windows in the right place to absorb heat, in the winter the house sort of heats itself. Okay. And um, the success of this project in Santa Monica is that our, our, our client, this is a really good measuring stick, um, yeah. our client didn't turn their heater on once last year and it never went below 68 degrees. Interesting. So these sort of good old fashioned, the way the Romans built, <laughs> it worked, they work today. Interesting. It's also a four hour firewall. You can't really achieve that unless you build out a concrete block, wow. which is, you know, the, the energy in concrete block and, you know, so this is a really great material for both thermally, the thermal comfort, it's re using recycled material, but it's also a four hour firewall and there's a moisture, so it's a really great yeah. material. And even as far as transporting these, these are far lighter. How much would this weigh if this were a cinder block? Um, <laughs> you know? It's, um, I mean, you wouldn't be, you, uh, you brought these in probably right, on a dolly, right, right? Right, It probably weighs, it weighs as much as a, a small block. Right. But it's also, you know, the concrete's an important, important part, you know, there's, concrete's energy intensive. <clears throat> this, this system, because you're, you're not using a lot of concrete in the structure, that's 25% of the concrete that you would use in a concrete block wall. Yes. So it's much less concrete. I, I like to think of it as it's the right amount of concrete. Right. That concrete's really important, not just for the structure, but it, to provide that thermal, you know, the thermal comfort. Yeah. And I talked about heating, but you can also, that thermal, that thermal mass is also important for cooling. So just so you design a house to absorb the heat in the winter, so you but you keep the sun out in the summer by just by designing the overhangs to, to block the, the sun out. So we know that the sun in the summer is 78 degrees, in the winter it's 35 degrees. Yes, yes. Um, and, so by, and so by venting the house at night in the, in the, in the summer, right. you can cool that thermal mass off and helps keep the house cool through the day. So it, it, it helps heat and cool the house. What are some mistakes that you feel other architects are making when trying to attain sort of a natural system or a sustainability in architecture? Well, the, the, the top well, number one issue is orientation. And then orientation, it, orientation and from my recent research, like really do, trying to document this, <clears throat> and this comes from the California Energy Commission, just getting that orientation right, you're gonna reduce the energy by 30 to 40%. Um, which is a pretty, it's, it's a pretty significant. And but just by, by turning a, the same building around the right direction, um, you, you can reduce the energy by that much. I kind of, I really ask why aren't more people doing it? Yes. Uh, at our house in Santa Monica, the orientation's not really quite right for, because of the, just the, the street grid in Santa Monica, but because of the, the um, you can make the house a little funny shape and get that sun to come in, in, in the way it's supposed to. Right. It's sort of a zigzag sort of shape. Right, 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 um, But so you can work around if the site doesn't have really great orientation, you can work around that. Our culture relies, you know, we, um, we have always rely on more technology than less technology. And we, we, we think it's important to ask about appropriate technology. You think of the envelope as, a, as an energy system. It's you know, not just something that you build, build like a refrigerator and then you, you use a smaller heating and cooling system that uses less energy, and that's great. But if you design it with just a little differently, then you don't really, you don't need that at all. I mean, you really can build, particularly in California, you can build so that most of the thermal comfort comes with that, without any additional energy input. Um, and to me, that just makes a lot of sense. Right. Um, uh, you know, the, the, this, this orientation question, you know, if, if you're thinking about it in cars, if we could, if we could do one thing to a car that didn't cost anything extra, but increase the gas mileage by 30 to 40 percent, we would all do that. Right. So my question is, why don't we do that with buildings? Can you tell me a little bit about what I see here? This looks uh, this looks very unique as a structure. Looks, what is this? It looks a bit like the Flintstones, I, I think. Yeah, like the Flintstones. So what what is this? This is a project that our firm is is designed and built and building in Claremont. The original structure and construction technique was developed by. Um, it's a, a really wonderful Iranian American architect named Nader Khalili, okay. which and his foundation is called Cal Earth, and we're building this for a Claremont-based nonprofit um, who tried to work with Nader Khalili, but unfortunately passed away. But so we're na we're now in the process of building this, and it's the second time this structure has been built. The first one is in Hesperia, but it is made out of earth-filled long sandbag tubes, or tubes that are like sandbags, held together also with barbed wire. Okay. Um, 
And so was the earth collected from the site? Yes, the, the earth is the, the building is collected from the site, which that in itself is a kind of a profound idea. I mean, the idea that all the lumber and the steel and all that stuff is not it's not shipped from somewhere else. It's you collect the dirt from the site and you fill a bag and you stack them up. Um, you you kind of stack them up like when we were kids, we rolled the clay yes. and you stuck them together. It's really much, very much like that. It represents this idea of building just from what's, you know, like local. You know, we talk about, you know, like eating locally. This is really local. This yes. is the dirt is from the site. Yes. Um, this project is also exciting as our, our client received a grant uh, to build it because she convinced them that the carbon footprint, the emissions from the construction process will be much less than a normal construction. And, and so we have to measure that. So what we're also doing is we've, we're d documenting or developing procedures how to document the total carbon footprint. So when it's done, we're gonna have, we're gonna really have very carefully worked out calculations to say this is the carbon footprint. We're not gonna be guessing and we're not gonna say it's carbon neutral or it's that. We're gonna know exactly <laughs> how much because we, we're monitoring. When a machine runs three hours a day, we keep a log that's run three hours a day. Um, but and because the you know ninety percent of the structure is dirt from the site, the carbon footprint and the emissions will be much less. I mean the emissions. I mean if all that all the lumber that gets trucked in, all that's not there now. Yes. <laughs> and so it's it's very exciting. But it's also this it's really critical this idea of really documenting how, what's the carbon footprint, and that could be that's a model that can be um, transferred to other building systems, wood or steel. But, but how are these as far as strength goes? And let's just say earthquakes and things like that, how, how are these going to hold up? As a person who's been looking and thinking about building, and, and we talk about Turkey, I, was, I lived in Turkey as a kid, I know Turkey, and um, and there's one there's there's one part of me that knows that this is a very good way to build. It's much stronger than rocks and concrete. But it's, there, there's, it, you know, the building code doesn't sort of look at it that way. The architect in me knows that you can't, it's kind of hard to prove it through the building code. So they're in a place now that's sort of a dilemma of how do you sh prove it to the building officials, how that how it will work. So how could these be made stronger? Perhaps, I mean, even you have the amalgamation of concrete with styrofoam. Could you possibly, in that soil, put something in there? Yes, yeah, so, but the, um, the the soil that's in the bags has a little cement, so it's like 10% cement. So it's so. Um, but you could integrate those sand, those dirt-filled bags with some concrete to sort of make it to resist the earthquake. And we looked at that for this project, but we, our engineers have figured out a way to convince the local building department that it will be okay. Okay. Um, but I... Didn't but, you say there were, before there were, you, you were trying to pull one of these apart with trucks or something and it wouldn't, you weren't able to destroy it yourself? Um, the, the original structure was built by Nada Khalili in the 90s in Hesperia. But the, um, they had to test it with, um, they, they took some chains and ch chained up the building, the shell, and they pulled it, they tried to pull it apart with big trucks, big diesel trucks, and they couldn't pull it apart. So from that test, that from what they did, you know, we have a lot of confidence it's very strong, but it still doesn't satisfy the building code the way, you know, you, you have to test building materials. And it, essentially, if, um, if somebody came up with $250,000, they could do a lot of tests on shaker tables, yes. like every other building system that's approved has to go through. Yes. So if somebody came up with a lot of money, we, they could test it, and then probably they would get their ICC number, and then everything would be okay. But they don't have that $250,000 to test it. So that's kind of... Okay, <laughs> that's, no, that's, it's, that's, it's, so, no, the reason I bring that up is yeah. not to put it down, but no, I think it's, I think that's, it's that's, genius. That's, that's, it absolutely, it's really an amazing. I mean, it's, um, I would as I, I invite people to come out and see it, yeah. uh, and it's a really, a really profound to watch them build it because... When, when will this be finished, by the way? It's going to be finished um, probably in six months easily. Okay. We're, we're, um, the, the bags are about, in some places, about four feet high, some of them five feet high. Yeah. Uh, and it, there's, they're not going to get any higher than five feet. And what do you think is uh, amazing about watching this being built? What's, what's different? I mean, I, I see, I can see in my mind a bunch of people putting some soil and a little bit of cement in, in nylon bags and then creating the, the bricks and then creating the structure. What, what is it? What is more than that? Well, there's, um, I, had to, I was um, at the site two weeks ago for the first time and it was really profound and as, as an architect I understand how it all worked but when you really watch people build like this first of all there's no dumpster and there's no power you know there's no dumpster so there's no waste 
There, there's no um, there's no power equipment going off. You know, you know, there's no saws. So it's really just this kind of happening. This thing happening in a dirt field, and people are really dirty. And there's something beautiful about people working honestly throughout the day and just really being really dirty. And you can and these people who are building it, they're very passionate about this way of building. They all come. Most of all of them come from Cal Earth. Um, which is the organization that is carrying on Nader Kalili's work. And so, it's, so it is really beautiful to watch and these grown-ups kind of playing in the dirt, but playing in the dirt in a very purposeful way. Yeah. Um, How does the cost per brick <laughs> compare to the cost per brick to bring in cinder blocks from uh, n another place? Um, it probably is going to cost a bit more than, I mean, it's certainly going to cost more than if you were to build this out of two by fours. Um, but once again, like our other project, you know, this this building will require very little or no energy to keep it with, provide the thermal comfort. And we'll look at how much energy it's going to be saving because yeah. we're going to continue monitoring it, the energy consumption after the building is is done. So you're in essence underground when uh, you build a home like this. You're under earth. You have the earth insulating your property. Yeah, the earth is um, it's it, that 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 earth is not such an insulator, but it's called the thermal mass. Which so it works a little differently, but so it it's heats up in the winter, and it sort of radi it will radiate that heat out into the structure at night. So it's not it's it's still different than insulation, but it but it provides this the heat and cold if the seasons if the envelope is designed right, and hopefully we we've designed it right, yes. and it, and it will work well. And an extension of this really documenting the the carbon footprint of the building of the construction phase, um, we are also going to monitor how much energy it consume it will consume during operation and this will be really important so at some point in the future because we're we have we have solar panels are using three times or develop, developing three times the amount of energy that it will need for operation it's creating a lot more energy than it will take to operate it so sometimes out in the future and we're going to sort of we're going to make the calculations to demonstrate show you know at some point you know in three years or four years at some point it's going to become what we call a carbon sink or a, a power positive building. So it's going to start really contributing back to Earth. Yes. And, and that, to us, is really exciting. One of, the, our, one of our principles is this, re, this idea of regenerative design. Yes. Build to generate more. Uh, and there's a, just in closing, this is a, a, a great idea that I came across. That a tree, because we're trying to learn from nature, a tree has twice as many leaves as it needs for the energy for its, for its cell and survival. So half of those leaves, you know, they fall and they, you know, they decompose and it's providing energy back into the ecosystem. And that's kind of, that's the model of regenerative design. So build in a way that gives back. And so that's different than sustainable, you know. Just, we, we, we wanna push the envelope to start creating more energy, like every other species. Our firm is um, architects and landscape architects. Yes. So we, um, we sort of can plan an entire community. Thank you again so much. <laughs> really appreciate it, Carl. That's great. Thank you.